We have the lowest percentage of Americans working. Who has more right to a job in this country? A lawful immigrant who's here, a green card holder, or a citizen, or a person who entered the country unlawfully? Well, Senator, I believe that um, the right and the obligation to work is one that's shared by everyone in this country, uh, regardless of how they came here. All right, there you go. Regardless of how they came here, it doesn't matter. Um, let's uh, welcome in Dinesh D'Souza, of course, conservative author and filmmaker. Dinesh, welcome. Before we get to that, Loretta Lynch, the hearings, the things she said, um, what's your take on uh, Governor Romney uh, exiting today? You know what, I was actually relieved to hear that because I think that, um, you know, by and large, this is such an important uh, office that you get sort of one real shot at it. And Romney had his chance. When we look back at the election of 2012, it was a Republican election to lose. He lost it. So while I wish him well, I, I'm relieved that he's out of the running the next time around. And who do you, I mean, did you notice what he said at the end when he left that, he, he thinks somebody lesser known than him, new blood, is going to get the nomination. Then he says, at least I hope so. Was that aimed at Jeb Bush and, and others, you think? Or what, what, what did he mean by that? Well, you know, it's possible, although another way to read it is just that we, you know, as conservatives and as Republicans are frustrated at the quality of the field that seems to be produced again and again. And this is now going back like four elections in a row. So there's got to be a better process of, of bringing forward candidates who are uh, at the level in which they could plausibly be president. And maybe Romney himself feels that same frustration. Really? I, 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 who, who do you like out of this field? Or, or maybe you know of some dark horse that, uh, that Romney might be uh, thinking of as well. Who, do, who would you like to see get the nomination at this point? You know, I don't, I don't actually have a favorite. I will confess that I'm, I feel a little frustrated with the field, and I, the way I divert that frustration is focusing my own energy on flaying the other side. So I spend most of my time thinking about Obama and Hillary and the Democrats and trying to do as much as I can to bring forth what they stand for, not worrying too much at this stage about the Republican field. Let me, let me throw this in, since we have some time before we get to uh, uh, Lynch. Uh, of course, uh, you, you know, your movies, uh, uh, blockbuster movies, uh, big hits, uh, and, and, and very meaningful and, and, and historic in many ways. Uh, what, when you hear and see the reaction to uh, American Sniper, uh, what, what's going through your mind? Well, you know, I've now been in this country since about 1980, and it seems that once every decade or so, almost by mistake, Hollywood produces a movie that is deeply conservative in its themes, and it becomes a blockbuster. There was Chariots of Fire, if I remember, in the 80s or early 90s, Braveheart, now American Sniper. Uh, Clint Eastwood is one of the last conservatives in Hollywood, and of course, he's getting up there in years. Um, the left, I think, initially tried to blast the movie. They realized how damaging it is to the values that they hold dear. Uh, and then people like Michael Moore, after an initial round of criticism, quickly began to run for cover because they realized how popular this movie is and how it resonates with the hearts of so many Americans. So terrific movie. I enjoyed watching it and I recommend it. Yeah, it was it was a wonderful movie. OK, let's talk about what we heard with Loretta Lynch at the beginning. Uh, and again, I'm no attorney, uh, Dinesh, but isn't it against the law for employers to hire uh, to, to hire to hire people who are here illegally? I mean, uh, you know, didn't they even try to get Mitt Romney on doing something like that with his uh, hired help around the garden or something? And here Loretta Lynch sits there, the would be attorney general saying anybody, no matter what their status, should be should be working. Well, there are a couple of things worth noting here. First of all, you know, if you go back, setting aside what the law says, to the simple question of where our rights come from, our right, for example, to vote, our right to have a job, these rights come out of a social compact, a kind of agreement, you might say, among the citizens of a democratic society. Uh, and because we come together as a society, we agree that we will share certain rights in the same way that a club might assign certain privileges to its members. Now. Those rights don't apply to aliens. They certainly don't apply to people who have illegally sneaked into the country. So it reflects a profound uh, misunderstanding at the basic level to claim that somehow illegals crossing into America have the same sorts of constitutional rights that accrue to American citizens. I was very disturbed to hear such a perverse statement. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I was uh, confused and disturbed at the same time. All right, this administration on consecutive days has doubled down with two presidential spokespeople, uh, Josh Ernest and his assistant, his deputy, if you will, uh, that the Taliban, or as they like to call them, and Obama does, the Taliban, uh, are not terrorists. Uh, and, and they use this, this cockamamie rationale that, well, there's no world domination uh, um, incentives or whatever uh, under the charter of the Taliban. They're more localized than, than al-Qaeda is. Uh, I mean, so I ask, what about the lone wolf in this country who, God forbid, kills somebody? That, he's not a terrorist because he doesn't want to take over the world? I mean, how do they keep getting away with this and putting this out there? Well... This stuff makes absolutely no sense. You know, the Unabomber was a terrorist. Uh, Bill Ayers was a terrorist when he tried to blow up the Pentagon. He wasn't trying to take over the world, but he was trying to inflict serious damage. Uh, and he was doing it in a, in, in a fashion that threatened the lives of civilians. So the traditional definition of terrorism has nothing to do with world domination. Very few terrorist groups have any hope of taking over the world. The Bader Meinhof gang couldn't take over the world. The Tamil Tigers can't take over the world. All of these are terrorist organizations. One of the things I think about Obama is that he's realized that no amount of recklessness really gets him called to account. There's such a degree of tolerance, almost embarrassing, uh, extended toward this guy that he could ultimately say the stupidest stuff and everyone pretends not to notice. It's almost like liberalism is now in a crisis because they realize that they've got this kind of crazy um, rhetoric coming out of the White House and they've got to pretend like it's meaningful. Yeah, no, it, it is... Uh... It is a sight to behold, and it's very, very scary what, what we've become uh, when you look at how, how close in time 9-11 was and how tough on all this the, uh, the uh, Bush administration was, although they softened I mean, up uh, too much to my liking at the end. But where we are now is just inconceivable. Dinesh, you rooting? You, you'll get to watch the Super Bowl? Uh, yes, I'm going to watch the Super Bowl, but I'm not going to do, do any betting in the confinement center because even if I won, I doubt I'd be able to collect. <laughs> All right. So who are you rooting for? Uh, well, I'm probably going to root for Seattle, but, you know, to be honest, I'm just looking for a great game. Gotcha. All right, Dinesh. Thank you, sir. As always, Dinesh D'Souza, ladies and gentlemen. Carrie Sheffield joins us next, Forbes contributor and competitive Enterprise Institute fellow. Uh, we'll talk to her about a case uh, that we should all be concerned about and you might not have heard of.